this video, I'm going to show you how to select and pair fonts like a pro. Hello, I'm your host Casino from Casino.com. I'm the Digital Alchemist. And today we're going to talk about fonts, how to select them and how to pair those fonts like a pro. Now, if you want to change your font game, make sure you watch till the end because I'm going to share a couple of free tools for the win. Now, before I share those tools, let's talk about font pairing. So you got the serif fonts and the sans serif fonts. Now here's what Wikipedia has to say about this. So when it comes to serif fonts, in typography, a serif is a small line or stroke regularly attached to the end of a larger stroke in a letter or symbol within a particular font or family of fonts. So that's what you see on screen. And this is actually a serif font. Okay, now let's talk about sans serif fonts. And before you tell me it's just the opposite of a serif font, let's read on. So Wikipedia tells us that in typography and lettering, a sans serif gothic or simply sans letter form is one that does not have extending features called serifs at the end of strokes. Sans serif fonts tend to have less stroke with variation than serif fonts and they are often used to convey simplicity and modernity or minimalism. And if you know anything about that channel, you know that I love minimalism. Now, as much as I love sans serif fonts, serif fonts have a role to play. So let me show you. So I created a quick design just to show you the example of what I'm trying to demonstrate. And first of all, it really goes beyond font pairing. Selecting the fonts is one thing, pairing the font is one thing, but before you even do that, taste is really important. And the more you watch beautiful designs and beautiful typography, the more you're going to know what to use and what not to use. So in this example, the logo here, uh, the typographic logo uses Comic Sense. And it's a font that I think everyone at some point has used um, just before I was getting started, you know, like everyone, I, I've used that font, but not very long. So what I'm trying to say here is try to stay away from those really popular fonts that everybody uses because those fonts can make you look amateur very quickly. Now, let's take a look at the other font here. So this font is a serif font and personally, I think it's a very nice font and it's the same font here for the, the button. But if you look at the image, it's about a company that sells headsets for virtual reality. So does it really match? So as I demonstrated uh, or tried to, the logo looks amateurish and the font here doesn't really match the subject. And that's really important also. Now, this is about branding. And you know, on this channel, I like to talk about branding, but I think it's really crucial. You should try to match the um, the branding so let's take a look at the second example so here it's uh, very artistic so if you look at the logo here um is it serious and serif it doesn't look serif but it's really artistic and the text here is the text that you see on a poem or for an artist but you don't expect that for a company selling headsets so imagine uh, oculus rift uh, using that font Maybe in a specific campaign, okay, but here it doesn't look good. Now let's take a look at the last example for um, this one. So as you can see, we have a bold logo here and then we have a really modern sans serif font here and we have the call to action also. So when you look at these, so let me zoom out. When you look at these, uh, it conveys a very different feeling when you watch these. And I think you'd agree with me that the third one is the one that matches most the branding, the subject, the type of company, uh, and the things that are happening here. I think the branding here is really on par with the fonts or the other way around. Now, let's take a look at another example. So here it's an artist, it's a writer. And the first thing I try to demonstrate here is that if you're trying to go all serif just because it's an artist, it doesn't really work that much. Uh, if you look, that font is oh, it's nice. This one is not nice in my opinion, but then again, beauty lies in the eye of the beholder. And then we have this one here. And then it's like everything is serif. And that's also a mistake I see many people do. The best thing, in my opinion, uh, is to try to mix and match serif and sans serif when it makes sense. Because like we saw in the previous example, this is really uh, tech orientated. So 
uh, a really modern font here was more interesting. So here, everything is serif, and in my opinion, that does not work. Now, the second example here is everything is sans serif. Now, I'm gonna say I have a soft spot for sans serif, like I said, so in my opinion, I quite like that. I like it because it's really modern and I think it works well. But to be completely honest, if we look at the third example, I think that this one works better because here it's all about a writer. It's about reading books and it's easier to read books with serif fonts from what I've read. So as you can see here, we have a mix of serif fonts and sans serif fonts. And even when you look at the call to action here, I think it really works. Um, if you think about a book, this all makes sense. It still has a modern, um, it conveys a modern feeling, but it's on par with the branding, it's on par with the subject. Now, if we look at both examples, so the two examples here, on the left hand side, we have a writer, so it's more artistic. And on the right hand side, we have our uh, high tech company. And I think both works well. And that's what I was trying to demonstrate with the choice of fonts. Now, if we take a look back at the other example here with the Centiri font, you look at those two. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. And I think you'd agree that this one looks way better. So if you look at those two examples, I think it works well. I only spend a few minutes uh, on these. So of course you would refine it even more. Also very important, try to have maximum of two or three fonts throughout your design. So if the logo is a typographic design, you should try to aim for maximum two fonts uh, throughout the rest of your design. And I'm talking mainly about web design, but of course it applies to graphic design also, depending of course on the subject. If it's something really, really artistic, you know, you may get away with it. But when it comes to websites, it's better to stick to two or maximum three fonts. Two is better. Okay, and as promised, here are a couple of tools that I love and I use all the time. So the first one is called Font Pair, as you can see here. And this one is very straightforward. You see the featured pairs. So if I click on featured pairs, it shows the featured pairs. And then on the top navigation, you can select a mix of sans serif and serif, or you can have serif and sans serif, uh, sans serif, sans serif, display sans serif, and so on. You can just go through uh, the various pairs and it's gonna give you an idea. Now, on a side note, I've seen this one way too much. <laughs> I can't see it anymore. Now, for the rest, usually when I start a project, I like to come here just to see if there are some new fonts, some new font pairs, and just to get some inspiration. And then I try to build my own. And to do that, I use a tool called Font Joy, and it's really a joy to use. So the principle is that you can click on generate and it's gonna generate some random uh, pairs. Well, actually here we have three fonts, so technically it's not a pair, but some random combinations. Now, what I love about this tool is that here on the left-hand side, I can click on the lock and it's going to keep that font no matter what and that's great because you can start with one font and then generate okay so now i generate a couple of other fonts i don't like those so i'm going to generate once again okay not my cup of tea once again okay let's say i want to keep that um serif font here so once again i can lock it and then all i have to do is keep on generating so that i can find the middle font and in most cases i will use only two fonts so i'll be i'll be fine with that but just for the sake of this video okay let's say i want this one great then i know what to do and these are uh, free fonts so they're google fonts so we, we have montserrat uh, hind siliguri and maytree and basically that's what you would use in your web design now of course you can use premium fonts as long as you keep the same principle. So let's say you wanna, you have a premium font, you need to make sure that it works well with the other one. Now, like I mentioned, fonts is all about branding. And if you want the killer branding for you or for your clients, I created the brand identity guidelines templates that you can download on my website for free. Initially, it was made for Affinity Designer, but you can use it with Adobe Illustrator with a workaround. So if you're interested, just go to casino.com forward slash branding. Now, if you got any value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up as it really, really helps growing the channel.
And if you want more videos about branding, web design, creative and digital alchemy, make sure you subscribe and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. So that's it for this video. Make sure you don't miss the next one. And in the meantime, don't forget to invest in your success. Thank <music> you.